and welcome to the very first of the IALD UK Light Conversations. Um, this one is called Lighting Discussions with an Editor. And we are very uh, proud to be supported by Egazini in this series of talks. Uh, there's some slides that you can see, hopefully, at the bottom of your screens, uh, which will be moving along as I'm chatting to you. So um, welcome. I'm Emma Cogswell and I look after the IELD in the UK and I'm based in London. And I'm, I'm aided in that by the lovely board member, Christopher Knowlton. And you can see us there um, when we were allowed to go out and be near each other. Uh, we were um, looking at the lights in Canary Wharf at the time, lighting festival. So if you ever need anything from the IELD, please do contact Christopher and myself and we'll be happy to uh, help you. So today we are joined by Vasiliki Malakasi, who's the Associate Director at GIA Equation, and Ellie Thrathi. I must apologise for my pronunciation of the names. I'm very much a Luddite English speaker. And Ellie is the Architectural Editor at Wallpaper Magazine. So we're very uh, privileged to have such uh, established uh, speakers with us today. And I'm very much looking forward to the conversations that we're going to listen to. And the next slide, please. So today we're going to be talking about public perception of lighting, um, how it's seen and how we can increase awareness of what we do particularly, which is architectural lighting design. So there'll be some questions going backwards and forth and also hearing on how we can hopefully promote that and uh, increase our awareness and get more employment, gainful employment. Please can I have the next slide. Vasiliki is an award-winning lighting designer, and I've known her for many years. She's uh, been part of the IALD and serves uh, on the membership committee and currently is also helping in the activities uh, for the LRIC. The LRIC is the association you belong to if you're a lighting manufacturer. Uh, we are very grateful for all those LRIC members that give us money to enable us to put on events. So I'm very grateful to those. Vasiliki's career is very littered with award-winning projects and, and she is uh, one of the most engaging people on, in the light, London Lighting uh, Society. So I'm very pleased and thankful for Vasiliki joining us today. Next slide, please. Ellie is the architectural editor for Wallpaper magazine. And if any of you haven't read the magazine or seen it, I urge you to go out and get a copy now. It's absolutely fantastic and is all encompassing for anybody that likes to wear a designer badge of any shape or form. Incredibly engaging and well worth a subscription. So you should definitely sign up and get yourself a copy. So um, Ellie's got her, her toe in the, in the water with lighting design, hope hopefully, and has a passion to listening to us and, uh, and help us along our way. So thank you very much for joining us today, Ellie. Thank you for Next. having me. Thank you, Emma. Uh, wonderful introduction. What can I say after all of that? <laughs> so <clears throat> we just uh, wanted to have a, a nice, friendly and informal conversation about lighting. And I guess this series, this engaging new series uh, with the ILD Talks is trying to bring something fresh, fresh views from outside the industry or from industries that they are effectively close to lighting, so to speak, and hear other people's opinions. So today is very much about some crossfire and some interesting discussions about lighting, public perception, and how we can engage more public with what we do and raise awareness on lighting design industry as a whole. Um, so I know Ellie for a number of years. I thought she's the best person to uh, basically pick her brains on the subject. And uh, I may know quite well what you do, but maybe would you care to explain the, the everyday work of, a, of an editor on an architectural lighting, on an architectural magazine? <clears throat> yes, of course. And, and thanks for uh, inviting me to be part of this talk. Um, is very exciting. I mean, my background is in architecture, my training, but uh, obviously lighting is a whole kind of different specialization. And in a way, you know, I think through um, knowing you all these years, it helped. It has helped me introduce um, lighting a little bit more. Um, so I'm the architecture editor of Wallpaper Magazine, um, and I guess this means that um, I look after 
almost anything anything that has to do with architecture in all our platforms. Um, that includes the print edition, the monthly print edition, and our website. Obviously, I work um, with our editor in chief and our web editor coordinating everything. Um, but my job involves a lot of um, digging for exciting projects, meeting people, hearing things, and um, well, actually, a lot of boring coordination as well. Um, it comes with the jobs. <laughs> it always comes with the jobs. Exciting, um, exciting you, stuff too. I would like to think, right? <laughs> yeah, you, it's 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 great. You get to travel. Well, not right now. Um, you get to meet people. Um, you get to see and hear all about, um, you know, what architects are up to, and um, I suppose the different kind of iterations and you know what um, does it mean to bring an architectural project to life. And uh, lighting actually is quite crucial in this um, process. Um, okay, I think that's all very interesting. Obviously, you have quite a wide view, and that's why you're here to widen up our views. Because um, we find as a profession, we're a bit introvert. We talk to ourselves. We like to talk to ourselves, um, and actually engaging with people outside our industry is what we should be seeking uh, to improve. And this is what I guess this discussion is trying to to tease a little bit. Um, so, in, in your view, uh, all the things you know about lighting, what, what is your view about architectural lighting? How do you understand it? And do you think there is a fundamental difference between your understanding as an architect by background and obviously a professional in the industry for many years and what your audience perceives as uh, lighting design? Well, I think it's quite interesting with lighting because it has a certain subtlety to it because um, it's everywhere around us, but sometimes you don't even notice it. Um, it is in every project. It's part of, you know, lighting architecture for me is um, making sure spaces are well illuminated, making sure artificial lighting and natural lighting work well together, um, making sure that um, lighting response to specific uses um you know obviously i'm sure you know better than me that you would work in a different way if you work on lighting for a, for a house design or if you're working on a gallery or something or an installation or something else entirely um at the same time because exactly i feel like um in a way if you have really really good lighting you almost don't notice it um it's kind of interesting because <clears throat> it's quite hard to kind of define and capture. Um, and maybe that's a little bit um, possibly what you mean when you, you, know, you, know, you say you're quite introverted and kind of, um, it's just because it's, it's, a, you know, it's such an important discipline, but at the same time, quite delicate um, as, a, as a product to kind of put forward. Um, I mean, our audience, I mean, I don't want to presume what, what they feel lighting is, but at the same time, you know, our audience is very design aware, um, but they're also not necessarily specialists always in design. We do cover a wide range of disciplines. So there's a lot of, um, there are a lot of architects um, that read our magazines and designers, but also a lot of associated disciplines. So you get uh, communications people, consultants of all sorts, um, you know, even people in finance, uh, people who make things happen, and you have all your clients as well, people who enjoy design and architecture and want to learn more about it, and people who, um, you know, they are enthusiastic about design and appreciate it, but may not necessarily be, you know, trained designers themselves. Um, I think this is a kind of fine balance and why, you know, Wallpaper, which is, you know, a magazine that is established with, it has a kind of architecture design angle, but it's not an architecture magazine per se. It's a, it's a more kind of lifestyle title that covers a lot of things. So our audience balances, um, you know, knowledge and enthusiasm about design with a more kind of general kind of perspective on things, I think. Yes, of course. So in that sense, I guess what you're saying, you obviously have to edit your articles and your your reports based on your audience and that audience is fairly varied. And yes. therefore, specialists coming on board with maybe a very particular agenda may or may not be relevant depending the, the context, I guess, or the editorial you're working on. Uh, well, which, I mean, which kind of makes 
interesting for us, I guess, because we like to publish um, in magazine ourselves. We like to to um, uh, talk about the research we we are engaged with or our colleagues are. We like to uh, showcase our finished projects and obviously participate in awards, not just lighting awards, but there are a lot of lighting related awards. So it feels like we are recycling a lot of this uh, useful information about the value of this profession within ourselves. and. The idea is, is there something we can do to increase the visibility in, in the general public? Like you as an editor, how would you see that? How would you advise to, to widen this agenda for, for our profession? Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> I mean, we, you know, as a magazine, we wouldn't get too technical, probably. Um, I mean, we, we are generally more focused on, say, you know, the kind of architectural, the, the architects and design angle, um, and you know, in the same way, we would celebrate, you know, the a, a great um, concert hall uh, with the most amazing acoustics in the world, and might not kind of necessarily, you know, you can't, we, you know, it's a visual magazine, you can't hear it, but um, you don't need to kind of mention all the, you know, kind of minute details uh, that make a, um, a great design happen. In the same way with lighting, you know, you don't have to talk about, I don't know, looks levels to kind of make your points <laughs> no, we've lost you there when we say that don't we when we start saying lax levels and uniformity patterns don't we yeah uniformity patterns for sure uh, i mean you. you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean that's i mean the thing is i think we have to kind of remember also at the same time that you know being having a language that um engages people and is relatable and is simple doesn't necessarily mean simplistic it doesn't mean that you have to kind of dumb down or kind of um, <clears throat> talk about your work, um, you know, in a kind of very reductive way. You, you know, it is exciting um, and super important work, but it's important to tell the story behind it as well, rather than getting caught up in, you know, the technical elements of it. Exactly the same way when I talk to an architect who tells me, oh, this is, you know, why I put a window there and this is why the need was there to create, you know, this opening and he won't necessarily explain to me how many centimeters is the glass in the window. Um, I, I think exactly in the same way, you know, it, it, it is an interesting story and a very important part of the design. Lighting is an integral part of every architectural project. So it's very important to um, also make this point, um, you know, get this point across and explain to people why this lighting was, you know, designed in a certain way, rather than um, the way the solution was delivered in technical terms. Yeah. If that makes of sense. Course. So it's uh, more about more about the story you're saying. It's maybe trying to engage the audience in terms of what the absolutely. story is, what is the the rational thinking, and what was the brief, maybe certain constraints in the project, but not, let's yeah. say, go too far deep on the technical side, and therefore make them relate to it in a, in a better way. Absolutely. I think at least that would work for us. Um, we, we do speak to a lot of very specialized companies, um, lighting but generally also manufacturers and and uh, material providers who have a lot to say and so much expertise but you know the way that you tell their story in each time is is kind of different um it, it relates to kind of your audience and who you're talking to um and also there's a variety of projects as well like you know you, lighting would be obviously very different you might talk about it in a different way in a project like say I don't know the Tate Modern or um, a housing scheme, rather than say um, you know more kind of lighting art or um, temporary, excuse me, <clears throat> temporary installations. Which um, I mean, one would argue that maybe this is also lighting. I mean, I'd, I'd be interested to hear your yeah, thoughts as I mean, well because it, it is quite it is a actually. kind of um, <laughs> a talk. <laughs> We could be debating this, and if other people were involved, you would definitely have a lot of questions about the <laughs> definition of lighting. It's an interesting topic between my peers. We often like to discuss and overanalyze. There is no straight uh, answer. I mean, if you look Wikipedia, the lighting designer is redirected towards the theater lighting, and of course, mm. a lot of the industry started from theater, but he has been enriched with engineers, architects, uh, people from design and other backgrounds. And it's kind of nice about us 
that's profession, but we're a fairly new profession that come from different uh, disciplines and we have therefore different perspectives. Um, what a lighting designer does is not really a straight answer and I don't consider someone who does an installation or for example who designs a luminaire doesn't have an awareness or an understanding of lighting. I guess the profession as we know it or as we practice it in the UK and abroad in the Americas and everywhere in the world is this. Um, there are obviously established markets and less established markets. Um, it is very much about the architecture, it's about dressing the architecture, it's about providing for an architectural um, project, for a facade, for an office application, for commercial, residential, um, and so on, so many different applications. And obviously urban, urban schemes, which is um, often something that people can easily relate to outside of their own comfort and their own homes. Um, so it's a very open profession and I think it's it should be open also to other interpretations and uh, we have lighting designers who participate on festivals, lighting installations, we were part of competitions and so on and that also has its merit. I think it's important because as an overall it raises uh, the awareness of the profession. Raising awareness it helps all the disciplines involved. I think um, that's in, in really your important. in your view you were saying before about the almost you were describing us as the unseen protagonist so you kind of notice the architecture the light not so much do you think that becoming invisible through the context is actually a success in this case oh in a way yeah it? absolutely i mean it's quite um interesting because um i was kind of talking to um a friend who who is um, um, an architect, a designer, and works a lot with um, restaurant interiors, and she was saying that uh, it's you know when you design a space like this, if the lighting is perfect, you don't really notice it. But if you start looking a bit pale and yellow, um, and if yes. something is a bit <laughs> wrong, that's that's when you notice the lighting. So the perfect lighting, in a way, is just when it allows life to just happen in the most natural way, um, which I understand the predicament maybe makes it kind of harder to capture it in a way and talk about it. Yeah. Um, I mean, you might find that your audience thinks that we're actually designing luminaires ourselves, like <laughs> I often have to explain what they do. <laughs> um, so we, we're not designing objects, so to speak, not that objects maybe you would feature on your, on your, on your magazine, or, but we do have a design the services. We design the ser services less done in a way, less understood. It's kind of almost hidden within the context of the building and it's, uh, it is somehow integrated to the architecture itself. That's the idea. Obviously, depending on applications, there are applications that lighting is more visible and it's therefore understand in a, in a different way. Um, so you think maybe, the nature of our profession makes us less visible or is it something that we can do to um, explain that more, explain the value of the service rather than the actual product? I think, <clears throat> well, for one, um, if you work with great photography and if you have people experiencing your buildings, you can absolutely make a case and explain, you know, and describe what you do because an amazing looking image or building instantly means this is work expertly done by one of your you know you one of your colleagues um there's also many opportunities i think where you know light can come into kind of more center stage and raise more awareness like festivals and installations which mm -hmm. i mean i know cross a little bit in and um you know the realm that we talked about with art but um you know i remember for example personally going um to do the Lumine um lumiere festival Yes, yes. A couple of years ago, um, and it was you could see that people were so interested. Like I know, I don't. I mean, I know it it verges on art a bit, and it's maybe something a little bit different. But it was full of people, full of families, and uh, you know, things like that actually are very accessible, very impressive, and can capture the um, audience's imagination really easily. Um, so I think it's also um, important to kind of um, acknowledge that there is a range within your discipline, as with yes, many. Yes, of course. Um, I mean, and, the boundaries are a bit 
blurred, I guess, between what art and architecture can be when it comes to light. Um, yeah. The whole idea is to, to use it as a medium to showcase the architecture. So obviously the architecture has to be there. But when it comes to festivals, it's a different, different sensation altogether. I have been to the same festivals and a few others with my colleagues and friends. Um, it is a beautiful experience and actually you're almost stripping away your technical side and you're trying to see it yeah. with a fresh pair of eyes as an end user, someone who appreciates the evening out and all the installations and so on. And that's actually quite kind of refreshing. And if, if yeah. that means people's understanding, like the general audience of lighting is that we're doing this, then I am happy because that would be a very good starting point, something to build on. Um, mm. And maybe we need more of that to actually raise the awareness within the profession as a whole and then explain the difference of the architectural lighting services, which is again another layer within the architecture yeah. itself. I think that would definitely kind of help um, because people, I, you could see they're hungry to kind of learn more and it's a very, it can be so impressive um, lighting. So why kind of, you know, why not shout out more about it? Um, and then there were also, <laughs> you know, honestly, there were there were other projects like I remember Illuminated River, which we've covered in the magazine before, and it, you know mm -hmm. it, it it was again also one could argue a piece of art, but at the same time, the lighting element was the main protagonist there, um, and you know um, I think projects like this that have a more kind of public presence really would help. Um, I mean I don't know how you view it from your point of view. I mean, this particular project is close to my heart in so many ways because I, I have been, I've seen it, I haven't been involved, but I've seen it in its inception uh, back in 2014 when I was involved with the Rothschild Foundation. So it was not even at the time Illuminated River Foundation. Um, so I, I saw how the whole thing was put together and obviously the good intentions behind the, the, the competition at first. And in the competition, we saw quite a lot of uh, teams putting together very interesting schemes with um, artists involved, with architects involved, and obviously lighting designers as part of, of, this, of this agenda. Most practices in London, I can think of, probably have participated in that competition. Um, so it's not, not so, so much about the outcome and the winning team, which obviously has presented a beautiful scheme. It, it is about the process and the essence collaboration between the different disciplines in a way you can say yes there was a missed opportunity because for for the lighting profession it could have been more engaged like the lighting designers would have been better engaged in this process um, I guess there was an, a strong element of marketing behind big artists and big architects uh, you know being on the forefront of these uh, teams of, of, of the winning teams and so on um, but that's okay because I guess you need the public endorsement and make that project public so a big architect would, would have more weight in that sense. Um, and I think the, the result which is coming up, I, I'm aware that they have I think four or five bridges almost uh, completed now and there is in total 15 bridges so another 10 to go. Um, we will see great results and the actual outcome of this will um, will be highlighting even more the profession and will give justice to my colleagues in Lightning who have been part of part of this competition and this project now. I think it was really exciting and it, as you, it highlights this idea of um, yeah collaboration absolutely because at the end of the day each project is every architecture project is um, you know is not the result of one person's work, even within the architect's office, it, it kind of involves, um, you know, a huge amount of collaboration on so many levels. Um, and then you bring in all, you know, the consultants and the specialists, and um, it's just a feat, you know, every time a project kind of completes, it's a cause for celebration um, and of a, a celebration yeah. of collaboration. I think you're right. It's more more today than before. Maybe I guess you've been doing this as long as I've been doing it, like 15 years, give or take, right? I, I definitely know you more or less that much. <laughs> um, so in the last 15 years, I, we start from the architect who obviously leads the team. That's the more, let's say, logical agenda when it comes to a project. And it should be this way. 
Um, how do you think that has changed? Do you think that we have more teamwork coming up um, or is just the architect still has a strong sense of leads when it comes to showcasing a project, when it comes to publishing work, when it comes to actually talking about the particulars of the project, what put this together as a, as a project? I think that without a doubt that we, we do see a kind of rise in acknowledging all this teamwork that's um, going on. And the architect traditionally did lead the kind of process. Um, but also I think the audiences and our audience at least is very interested to hear more about um, collaborations and how collaborations work. We have um, done for many years now, for example, um, a project and exhibition called um, Handmade um, which its next iteration will be called Remade, which is about all these collaborations and how architects and designers work with, um, you know, manufacturers, for example, or people who are, you know, not the traditional designer or consultants um, to kind of make things happen. And we do like to kind of bring this process forward and talk about what happens behind the scenes. Um, because often most of us, all of us, um, we see the final result, but um, I think people are always curious to see what helped compose this project um, and what about the different elements and the um, people and practices that, and expertise that took to, um, you know, make an amazing project come to life. Um, we, we do see tremendous response when we talk about um, processes and, and um, you know, development of ideas and, and projects. So I think lighting definitely falls in that category. I think there's definitely a hunger to kind of for people to see more. Um, and people, I, I definitely feel people want to kind of listen to um, the lighting architect story. Oh, we've, we've definitely have a lot of stories to tell, that's for sure. Um, it's interesting what you said that obviously you, you're interested in the collaborative nature of the project and you want to showcase other disciplines, not just lighting designers, all the other disciplines that may be part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, we kind of see our wallpapers, maybe my view, as a more polished version of the, the, the final, let's say, glossy effect in the end. Mm -hmm. Is, is process part of this? Are you are you happy to talk about the process? Are you happy to talk about, I don't know, mock-ups that they make things or the choice of materials or things that may be not so polished, uh, mm. but this process makes them what they are. So is this yeah. something that you think that your magazine would be interested in publishing and that for my colleagues who are listening or other disciplines, I guess, uh, might be more inclined to, to uh, approach, you know, not just wallpaper, other magazines that they are design magazines? I mean, from our perspective, yes. Um, we do have, um, it depends on the feature and depends on the angle, I guess. Sometimes we, mo many of our features talk about the end product, um, but then we also have, um, you know, recurring columns and features and, and themes uh, that talk about processes more. Um, for example, our August issue is almost exclusively usually um, kind of dedicated to um, pro the process of, um, you know, how we made the handmade projects um, for that exhibition that we do every year happen. Or we also do um, uh, when, you know, we talk about um, designers' profiles and architects' profiles, often we might um, show them in the studio and so process of what they do, process of what they do. We might also, um, you know, we photograph buildings in construction as well quite often and that's a big part of the process. Um, so mm -hmm. yes. So you in, have a before and after kind of effect. Uh, is, I think you know, especially yeah, with light is, um, is an easy thing to, to, to showcase, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, we, we, often, we often do. Um, I mean, it, it really depends on the project as well. Um, so, you know, we, for example, with Illuminated River, we couldn't actually show, um, you know, the, the piece on, on the bridge, but we show it in um, Leo's studio. We um, showed mm -hmm. his mock-ups. Th there are ways we can explore depending on which, um, what, what each project um, offers, I think, in terms of um, the visual. And let's not forget also, we also have a website which is much more interactive. and you know, in the traditional days where you had only paper, you only had photography to work with, but you know, we're much more open and we can, um, we're, it's much more flexible these days because you can show um, film as well, which I imagine, you know, would be, bring things to a whole different level. 
I mean, for sure, I can say as a profession, lighting is it has a visual capacity. Uh, visual media like video and recordings or photography is in our favor because they can showcase their work more than they would, for example, if we were acousticians or other disciplines that are even more hidden in the background and less visual in, in that sense. So yeah. there are a lot of tools nowadays that we use to, to explain our story. There are a lot of uh, processes and maybe even a time lapse, so to speak, of how things have changed Absolutely. or before and after image and so on. So that would be something, I'm glad that there is this option, it's not just the, obviously, the printed edition is the, the website that, that can be explored, and especially right now, because, I mean, we are <laughs> we are in a, in a digital era, and even more so with uh, what's going on around us. I mean, look at us, we're having a conversation right uh, with oh, an audience we cannot see. Uh, we don't know who we're talking to right now. Um, <laughs> and this is definitely something that changes, and we, we see changes in the future that affect our profession and the whole construction industry will be a completely different place in three months from now. Um, so how do you see these changes in the future? Do you think that there will be more collaboration, we'll be finding ways to communicate or interact with one another differently? Well, communication is an essential part of, you know, being human and, and you know, creating anything. So, I, you know, there's no doubt that communication, we, we will find a way to communicate. Um, I mean, we're doing this now and, you know, probably... We're doing this wouldn't, now, yes. <laughs> we wouldn't be doing this four months ago, um, probably. So, you know, I think um, finding new ways and exploring, um, you know, the digital realm and um, um, just doing things without traveling, for example, is a whole new challenge. But I, I absolutely have no doubt that um, the industry will adapt as it always does. Yes, um, of course. I, I, I we think, have you know, yeah, my, but of course, and we, <laughs> there's always reason to be optimistic. And, you know, some of the greatest things were kind of discovered in challenging times. Um, and obviously, none of us. Um, wants to be going through this but um i'm sure i believe we have a very strong design and architecture industry who um will make amazing things out of um, quite difficult circumstances sometimes you need challenges to to actually push you a bit further um we find it with within our practice and other practices i'm sure right now we communicate on the internet all day and some things are a bit faster some things are a little bit slower but we're still kind of learning. I think in the future, uh, all the practices will have to find ways to be more adaptable, more mm -hmm. flexible. Maybe we will see flexible working hours, flexible um, way of uh, talking to one another. We don't need so many meetings in person after all. Um, and then that will definitely change the scene for us. Uh, maybe even invite other professions to help us with what we do. Um, I really think that the lighting designers will have chances in the near future and will um, engage with architects uh, in that sense. I'm sure it's already happening. Yes, yes, so it's already happening. <laughs> um, I don't know if we have any other questions or we would like to maybe open this up to whoever is giving us some feedback online. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Thank you very much for your uh, conversation. That was really great. Um, thank you. Um, Ellie, I have a question for you. With a lot of designers being at home at the moment, uh, this might be a really good opportunity for people to promote their business or, or projects. Um, what's the most eye-catching way to send something to an editor? Are you looking just for a photo and 100 words or a short description or what's <laughs> the best way to get your attention on, on something that we think is newsworthy? Um, I mean, absolutely. Please send me things. I, I welcome submission. I always tell people it's much better to send me things. I'd much rather, and I'm not shy if something is not right for us, I'll say no. I can explain why. But I'd much rather see it and say no than not see it at all. Um, so absolutely send me things. Um, I think on very practical terms, a little bit of a visual helps. I have a visual memory. Send me a photo of whatever it is, even if it's not perfect, even if it's not final, it does help me, or a drawing, or um, it helps me understand it. And um, 
a little bit of an explanation, I guess. And it's, it goes back to what we were talking about storytelling. Tell me, I mean, I, maybe I don't need all the technical details straight away, um, but tell me why this project is exciting in a way. Explain to me in like three lines in or four simple lines. Terms. In <laughs> no, no uniformity patterns, yeah. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then, you know, it, I guess see it as more of a conversation starter rather than, oh, I have to write this perfect thing and send it to somebody and they're going to read it and, you know, say yes or no. It's more about engaging a thing at this point. And even if, you know, I get sent something and I might not publish it straight away, it's, it's a way of meeting people and it's a way of connecting and finding out more. And perhaps it might not lead to a project being published, but it might lead to me finding out more about your studio, which maybe I didn't know about before. And I just have one last question because I know we're quite long on time. Um, do you think now more than ever design has a role to play in educating people for its importance in our, in our built environment? And is that a story that you're looking to you know, sell to, to the wider public? Um, I mean, design is absolutely necessary and um, I mean, I'll tell you what, especially in this time where we find ourselves um, sort of trapped, quote unquote, in our homes, um, everything becomes more kind of heightened and more important. So you kind of start noticing things that maybe you didn't notice before. And I mean, I'll tell you what, you need great lighting to be in your house every single day, all day. Otherwise, you'll get a headache. Um, <laughs> you know, it's all the little things that make, um, you know, life easy and comfortable um, that you kind of dismiss them maybe. But it is absolutely essential to kind of um, highlight them and make sure that, you know, they are designed properly, that the design is important and it affects all our lives. Um, and that's just, you know, now, I mean, without even going into the kind of micro, macro scale, where, you know, all the kind of big questions, but on a very kind of everyday level, um, I think um, design can improve lives. It's as simple as that. Thank you. So I, I'm just going to draw this session to a close and thank very much Vasiliki and Ellie for joining us today. And uh, we'll be thank running you. on next thank year. You. So please register for the next one. Uh, thank you to everybody that's taken part. Thank you for the questions. Uh, we can keep a record of those questions and try and answer them if we didn't get round to it today. So thank you very much and we'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye everyone. Bye.